Welcome back to the next system test with the ADT Unimode 10UD Fire Alarm Control System. This is a 10 zone conventional fire alarm control panel. Today we are going to be testing everything on the board with the exception of the duct detector and its key switch simply because in the last system test I dedicated the entire video to that and uh, the smoke alarm system because that's not a part of the fire alarm system here. So everything here you'll get to see. Right here we have a Gentex SHG-24-110WR. That is a horn strobe. Right here we have a Gentex Commander 3 with a blue strobe and that is wired into the police pull station. And we'll look at that a little bit more later. Right here we have a Tectone quarter light. I have it set up so that turns on when the when one of the pull cords gets pulled. Right here we have a Gentex GXS-4-15-75WW. This is a non-syncable remote strobe. Coming down here, we have a System Sensor 2400 smoke detector, and then we have a System Sensor 5604 heat detector. Right here, we have a Firelight ANN80 enunciator. This is basically a smaller fire alarm control panel. And then going down here, we have a notifier NBG12LX. However, the LX part, which makes it addressable, is not being used. I just have it wired as conventional. This is a Federal Signal 4050-001T, I believe. We have a Simplex key test station. Going down, we have a System Sensor key test station. We also have two identical blue pole stations down here. You see one says police and one says tornado. The tornado one is hooked up to the siren and the police one is hooked up to the fire alarm with the blue strobe. <laughs> That's the Gentex Commander 3. And I'm going to open it up to see the model of it. And the model is SG-42CXK1. I think I read that right. And the Tectone pull cords. So the first device we're going to be doing today is the System Sensor Heat Detector. A really nice subscriber donated about 10 of these, well 10 of them that I'm keeping, to this channel. So I have a lot of them. That means we're going to permanently activate one and not feel bad about it. <laughs> so these activate at 194 degrees Fahrenheit and we're just going to try and use a lighter. I know heat goes up, but we're just going to try holding it right next to it and see if we can get it to go. Whew, that's good. And there everything goes. I don't know what's happening here. That, that's a weird glitch. and silence the alarm. I don't know why it was stopping its code for whatever reason, but as you can see, the top hat just kind of exploded off, or the little disc, and now it's permanently activated. And now that it's permanently activated, we can't really reset the system right now. I just reset it, and you see, it'll just reactivate, because it's permanently activated. Yep. So now I'm going to go ahead and quickly replace that. All right, the new detector is all wired up. We're just going to go ahead and twist it on. And while I was wiring it, I noticed this one is a 135 degree model. And the one that we just activated is a 194 degree model. I thought that was kind of interesting. But this one, it's all blown up now and completely useless to me. So I just put that over there. <laughs> it's still rolling. Of course, I'm going to go pick that up later. Don't worry, everybody. Come on. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and pull the notifier and beach 12 LX. So when I was replacing the heat detector, I did go ahead and change the coating in the panel. It's supposed to be on March time, but for whatever reason, this alarm only likes to accept about five seconds of coating at once, and it just stops for a couple seconds. I think that's kind of weird. But we'll go ahead and move on. See, this is flashing, and this is flashing. Yep. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and pull this. That's weird, honestly. It 
just doesn't like going off, I guess. <laughs> now we'll go ahead and spray out the smoke detector with some fake smoke, otherwise known as Solo A4. And from what I hear in the field, it works great. Let's go ahead and pick this up. All right, we'll go ahead and reset this one. Takes the notifier key, comes in, and that's how you reset that. And then the other one, this is a little bit older style and it takes a while to reset, so I'm just gonna do a camera trick. And now it's magically reset. <laughs> and we can go ahead and reset the panel. Get the key ready. This is called a simplex test station. It's used mainly in duct detectors. However, I have it wired up in the system as kind of a fire drill feature. Basically, you turn it to test, all the alarms go off, and then you turn it back and all the alarms stop. Here we go. Let's go ahead and test it out. And just a side note, one of the winners from the fire alarm give out from a few weeks back decided, received their package and decided to send me back an alarm from their collection, which is a another simplex test station. So thank you very much for that. Okay, now we're kind of at the bottom of the board and I'm gonna demonstrate these three devices. The two blue pull stations, they came with little stickers so you could kind of customize them. And I have them saying alert alarm and then there's specification at the bottom. So this one's police alert alarm, and this one is tornado alert alarm. And then this is kind of a reset switch. Again, not really something you'd see on a real system like this. I just kind of made it for my system. Basically, you put the key in, and then you turn it, and then it will reset the system. So we'll go ahead and see the police alarm. Okay, that's weird how that's not working. Alright, now we'll go ahead and test out the tornado alarm. Here we go. Push and pull. Okay. Oop, I forgot to reset it. Ah. There. So I figured out the problem. The reason it didn't reset with the with the with this pull station is because apparently the panel has to be acknowledged in order to do the reset switch. So that's weird. All right, I think that completes the test of everything on my homemade demonstration fire alarm system. Thank you guys for watching this video, and have a great day.